In fact, the corporate sources of the money are not made public by the George Mason Law School, which is located a long way from the golf courses of Tucson in the suburban sprawl of Arlington, Virginia. No seminars for judges are held here. These are uh, academic uh, retreats. What could be more natural than for a law school uh, to seek to uh, train academic uh, judges? Why does it have to be at a golf course? Uh, it is a retreat. Dean Mark Grady, who rejects the conservative label many have attached to his law school, says he cannot understand why anyone would object to the programs for federal judges, which he says are unbiased, or why anyone would raise questions about the source of the money. It comes from major corporations, that's right. I'm not, I'm not disputing that it comes from major corporations. Uh, and in fact, I... Which I, ones? Which major corporations? It comes from a variety of major Can corporations. Can you give me the names, your three or four biggest? We do not publicize our, our, our sources of funding because uh, the academic uh, program stands on its own uh, feet. Good shot. The corporate names used to be publicized until 1994, around the time criticism of the program began. The list was a who's who of Fortune 500 companies, many with numerous cases before the federal courts, and also included a foundation run by a reclusive, ultra-conservative multimillionaire, Richard Mellon Scaife best known for financing investigations of President Clinton's personal life. But the dean refused to talk about who is on the list now, including SCAFE. Does it include the uh, SCAFE Foundation? Does it include the SCAFE Foundation? Um, as I say, we do not publicize our sources. But our 2020 investigation found tax documents showing SCAFE, through the foundation he runs, continues to help pay for the judge's free trips some one hundred fifty thousand dollars last year alone to be honest with you i don't understand why you're making such a big production out of this what where are you going with this what difference would it make if the scape foundation or any other foundation donated to these programs a significant difference in the view of two leading ethics experts we talked with judges are allowed to attend such seminars but the two experts say, under the ethics rules for judges, the judges have a responsibility to determine who's paying for their free week at the golf resort to avoid possible conflicts with pending cases. The week after this seminar, Judge Osteen of North Carolina was assigned a major case involving the Philip Morris Company, which, at least in the past, was publicly listed as giving money for the George Mason seminars. Philip Morris refuses to say if it still contributes. I have no idea where they raise their money, but have it comes you understood through. They, they receive it from corporations, from uh, conservative uh, nonprofit groups. No, I have not understood that. They don't tell us that. Judge Neil Biggers of Mississippi. Don't you think you ought to find out? Not necessarily, because what difference? I, if I don't know who is uh, paying for it, then I'm not going to be uh, affected either way by. It. Well, aren't you affected by who they choose to speak to you? Not at all. It's an educational thing. At night in Tucson, the money from Richard Scaife and others pays for the day's final activity. Cocktails and dinner on the veranda. All part of the plan to make everyone comfortable. And all, according to one distinguished former judge, creating for those on the outside the appearance of improper and unethical behavior. I think judges should realize that, that they don't have that much credibility to spare. As chief judge of the powerful D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals for years, Abner Mikva says he was appalled to see many of his own colleagues, good judges, he says, being wined and dined by corporations in the name of judicial education. The appearance of impropriety is, is considered as important as the impropriety itself. I don't care if the judge can pass a lie detector test to prove that he wasn't reached. And it doesn't matter how the judge rules. What matters is that the People who have to accept that decision as having been made in the merits are suspicious. And our 2020 investigation also found many judges attend more than one of the free seminars, including James Jarvis of Tennessee. This was his fifth seminar. When we talked to him in Tucson, he wanted to stress the judges pay their own greens fees. There's no sin in playing golf as far as I know. And, uh, but you, you're I a paid for this. I paid for this. Who paid for the room? Well, uh, George Mason paid for the and room. Who paid for the uh, airplane ticket? I, well, I paid for one, but I'm, I expect to be reimbursed. Judge Jarvis told us he had no idea who the corporate sponsors were. But our 2020 investigation found that since he began attending the seminars, 
Judge Jarvis has presided over at least six cases involving large corporations, all of which confirmed to us they were at the time helping to pay for the George Mason seminars. Judge Jarvis says any suggestion that he is being influenced by the free trip or the classroom courses is wrong. Well, I, can, I can understand that you all could spin it that way if you want to. I mean, that's, that's your business. That you're in the news business. And the judges from Iowa said they regarded the seminars as a valuable educational experience, but that they couldn't possibly be influenced by a free vacation. Nobody's tried to influence me. I know that. And Suddenly, I don't perhaps? Think, I don't think I'm influenceable. But the judges may not know just what their hosts have in mind then. The law school dean openly boasts of trying to influence the thinking of federal judges at the private luxury seminars. Well, we're proud of that. So you're out to change the judges' minds? We are, yes, we are, we are out to influence minds. And if court cases are changed as a consequence? If court uh, cases are changed, uh, then uh, that is something uh, that uh, we are proud of as well. And by the most recent count, at least 550 federal judges in this country, including two Supreme Court justices, have quietly accepted free trips to the George Mason luxury seminars. Most of the time, we think about judges with more respect and more deference than we think about our elected officials. I want to keep that distinction. We don't want judges to be considered just another bunch of politicians. Brian Ross's investigation has already prompted reaction in Washington. Today, two senators who have been fighting unsuccessfully for legislation to ban federal judges from accepting free luxury seminars say that they will try again later this month.